Hi guys, PJ back at it again with another PC release. This one uh, being specifically for PC, no console or anything like that at the moment. It's an exclusive. Steel Division Normandy 44. Now this is an RTS game, real-time strategy, and uh, it's World War II. You know, you, you take control of everything from uh, the 101 Airborne to, uh, I think it's British, got a bit of gen on it over here. It's, uh, let's have a look, command over 400 historical units. And what else have we got? German Armoured 21st Panzer Division, uh, 3rd Canadian Division the, during the invasion of Normandy 1944. So a bit of a historical game here. Uh, there's a lot of bump on you know how accurate it is on the on the Paradox website, the uh, devs that made the game there. So yeah, they, they've tried to keep this pretty true to form by the look of things. Certainly some of the images in the background you can see there look authentic. But uh, this video, we're going to be looking, obviously, at the options again and what sort of graphics load this game does. Before we go into them, I will just say this. I ran the uh, auto configure option on the game, so it, it sort of switches through everything to configure what is best for the game on your particular PC. After spending an eternity going through all these options that it did automatically, um, it basically refused to load after it had figured out what was best for my PC. So I'm not recommending you use the auto configuration option. <laughs> you know, the, the configuration took about five minutes and it went through loads of different settings and stuff. And uh, I noticed it top VRAM out at four, uh, four gigabytes VRAM and it was using 10 gigabytes of normal RAM. So uh, it's pretty intensive. You know, CPU cores were 70, 80% at uh, one point as well. So this, this game, is taxing you know there's, there's no doubt about it so if we have a quick look at the menu I've not played it at all so obviously boot camps grayed out there all I did was load it and go into the auto configure to see what it would do so we've got solo uh, which basically there is a story mode there is a campaign on this particular game uh, the bump on the website says let's have a look yeah it says against enemies challenging single-player campaign or you can obviously go multiplayer and play this game it's up to you Battle groups, obviously something to do with the gameplay there. Like I said, I've not played it. I'm not concentrating on that side of it with this game. Your own profile there, you know, speaks for itself, doesn't it? You're going to have an online profile uh, that you'll also take through the campaign as well. And options. So on options, uh, we have, let's have a look, gameplay at the top there. Sticky selections on and off, I would have thought. Yeah, no and yes there. Automatic fire on enemy units no and yes now think about that one because if you want to try and stealth up on a, a an enemy unit you don't want the you know you don't want the computer to take over and automatically start firing for you you might want to position your units around whatever it is you're trying to to capture or attack before you open fire so obviously i would personally keep that one on on no do not let them do that uh uh supplies rather yeah enemy units or supplies like i say in the, in the little bump here on the Paradox website, it does say enemy units as well as supplies. So we've probably worded that a bit better on the menu there. Automatic Winchester evacuation. Okay, what does it say? It says, planes will automatically evacuate after emptying their main weapons. Yeah, well, that'd be a good thing, wouldn't it? Otherwise, there'd be a sitting duck. You don't really want that. You know, it'd be whizzing around in circles above the battlefield getting shot down so yeah you want them to retreat afterwards um mouse trap yes okay we haven't got an option to switch that off so whatever mouse trap is i can't highlight it to tell you what it is sorry guys uh what we got mouse border scroll pretty obvious one isn't it it says here translates the uh yeah, translate the camera when the mouse is at the edge of the screen. So, a bit like all your RTS games, you can drag the uh, map around by moving your, your mouse to the edge of the screen. Pad camera control. Uh, activate, deactivate camera movement with the pad. I haven't got a controller switched on at the moment. We will see if it will seamlessly switch over in a minute. I'll switch one on and uh, see if it works. So, we've got yes and no on all these, I'm assuming. Yeah, we have. Language. English, what other options have we got? Fr uh, French, Italian, Dutch and Spanish, right. Okay, leave it on English for my sake. Auto save each replay. Yes, I don't seem to have the option to turn that off. Don't know why. Save on Steam Cloud. 
yeah, come on. If you turn that off, it's going to save to just your computer. If you get a hard drive failure, you've lost your saved game. Back in the day, you know, when we only had a uh, saved game on the console or on the computer, yeah, I lost quite a few. But nowadays, thanks to Steam Clouds and Origin and all the rest of them, yeah, great, we got them all backed up. So leave that one on, you know. Unless you specifically don't want to for some reason. Personally, I'll leave it on. Um, interface. Icon type, RTS or NATO. Oh, that's interesting. Nice little quirk. Label sizes. We're on medium. It goes to minimal, very small, small, large and very large. I would imagine that's labelling units. You know, for example, Panzer Tank, uh, whatever battalion or whatever. You know, uh, if you have it on huge, you can obscure something that's possibly next to it. Icon size in multiple selection normal small or very small makes sense doesn't it if you drag a box around a load of units uh you you don't want it to watch lo read loads of text you know, not really just a basic one will do display front line opponent both or none hmm. both so you know where your own front line is and the enemy front line is uh hood size normal very small or small Display minimap, yes or no. Close production menu. Close automatically, always keep open and keep open during deployment. So I would imagine that's when you're building your units. Okay. Let's have a look. Display unit view panel by default. Yes, no. Show unit name, yes, no. And unit scaling, normal large small or non leave it on normal uh, apply that because i did change that to both didn't i controls okay there's your keys many 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 keys in an lts game i uh, will see if it'll switch over in a second when i've gone through all these to to the controller so i will just switch it on now while we're in this menu see what it does so Xbox controller, trusty, bit worn out, still works fine. And on, what's it going to do? Hmm. I don't think it's uh, a controller game, to be honest with you. There's that many keys. Um, it's a bit like if you played Halo Wars 2 or whatever on the Xbox, it plays fine. But God, would it be better with a mouse and keyboard? You can't zoom out very far and stuff on that game. So, proper RTS game and being a PC exclusive like this is, I can see why they've gone just mouse keyboard. It makes sense. I'll put that away. That's not going to be used. Okay. So, audio. We've got some options here, haven't we? Master option, music volume, voice volume, sound effects volume, ambience volume, dynamic range compression. What's this then? Sound volumes above a certain threshold are reduced by this amount when required to avoid sound saturation. Makes sense. So that one doesn't cancel the other out. Yeah, I get that. Okay. Uh, video. Oh, loads of options here. What we got then? Presets. It's, got, it's on custom at the moment. Um, ooh, we'll go through each of these, I think, guys. So we have an insane level. Hmm. Well, I always start at the top. <laughs> I always think an insane level, though, is going to be like your 1080 Ti in SLI or something. Maybe not. Let's have a go. Let's click insane and see what happens if it crashes. Sneaky little editing here, guys. Um, I did the original recording for this a few days ago, and the other day I recently upgraded to a ultra-wide HDR monitor so i thought before this video goes live i'll just put this little edit in and make sure this game supports ultra wide so um loading the game into the menu here we're, we seem to have gone to a, a windowed display and uh originally this would have been set to full screen 1080p for my old monitor so uh, we'll actually have a look and see what the selections are now well we could just load into game and see if it actually works let's do that because uh, you've already seen all the options menu, so it's not really much point in, uh, in going back through it all, is there? 
it's uh, it's clearly got the the black balls at the sides at the moment but that could just be the menu let's see we've now lost all the windows toolbar at the bottom so things are looking up hopeful I've noticed quite a lot of the recent games do support it and this is one of them there you go that does support ultra wide displays it's not a HDR game don't get me wrong um, but PC games are you know adopting that more and more now shall we say but yeah there you go that fully supports 21 b 9 guys so uh, you got no problems there you haven't got to mess around with any files or anything to put custom resolutions in it's fine absolutely fine okay back to the original video dialogue where i do the, the very quick change <laughs> okay or perhaps not as the case may be you know when you're working on something and you accidentally delete the rest of the work in other words the stuff that i recorded before showing a bit of gameplay yeah i deleted it so here's a bit more gameplay uh if anything just to show you the cpu load and everything because i've got this on eight player ai okay so the cpu is is doing tons and tons as you can see my frame rate has absolutely dropped like a brick we're on 27 frames per second 24 frames per second um cpu cpu doesn't appear too bad off the cuff um 50 percent 40 percent on each core however the res resolution and stuff can't be helping we're at uh, 3.8 and a half gigabytes of vram and the gpu is fully maxed out so uh i even with the old fx 8350 that i've got here at 4.2 it's still not being anywhere near utilized you know even with a game like this with eight, eight players on ai it's uh it's still gpu limited so uh, my next upgrade although the nice ryzen cpus are out and uh, you know i'm a great sort of fan of amd what would the uh, the costs of intel that's primarily my reason um i don't feel the need to upgrade yet in all honesty i'll be upgrading the gpu as soon as the eva the prices of the 580 drop because you bitcoin miners have uh, pushed the pricing through the roof haven't they they're, they're all ridiculously priced now or maybe a gtx 1070 um i've had gtx cards in the past i've had 580 and stuff like that that's the uh you know the, the powerful one of the time i don't know i'll have to see but i'm definitely gpu limited so it's, it's time for an upgrade on the gpu um maybe memory we'll see who knows but as you can see frame rate unacceptable i would have to drop some of the details down from the maximum level that they're currently set at i'd have to probably drop them to high I've got them on insane at the moment so knock them down one peg and uh, you, you probably keep this above sort of 30 frames per second I don't particularly see the need for this to be uh, a 60 frames per second game it's it's just not not necessary really it's you know it's an RTS game you know what I don't even know how you move these vehicles <laughs> what we got what's this placing a beacon oh launch battle would help wouldn't it there we go there you go, that's got a bit of movement on the go, so if I can wreck my frame rate even more. Amazing how taxing these uh, RTS games are on the hardware. You know, everybody sort of thinks of your uh, your Crisis 3s and your, and your newer, very graphical games as taxing, but uh, these are taxing in a different way. Well, I'm going to leave them AI to play out and uh, kill each other off which I'm sure they, they will do. I've got convoys coming up now a lot. And um, with that, you know, I hope this video was of some use to you, going through all these options and stuff. If it was, please click like on your way out. It would be much appreciated. And uh, subscribe for future videos. I try and do one every day. However, PC game releases or console game releases don't come out every day, so there are little gaps, you know. If there's any game in particular you'd like to see me cover, please drop it in the comments below and I'll do my best to uh, sort that out for you. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now.